there were really three things, I think, that came together. Mind you, this was in the uh, early 1990s. So the wall had fallen, communism was vanquished, but uh, there was a lot of uncertainty, a lot of questions of what and how would evolve in Central and Eastern Europe, in these countries that had been for half a century uh, encased in that communist uh, bloc, and now free, free to uh, reestablish democratic institutions, free market economy, all of these things that were engaging so many people. That was one thing that was going on. Another was an evolution in AJC's own relationship with the Nauman Foundation as part of a larger and still very challenging issue of German-Jewish relations, coming to terms with uh, that uh, uh, horrendous uh, event in history, the Holocaust, and in ways that it linked Jews and Germans, forced them now to confront each other, even in new generations. And I think really the vision of some of the leaders of the Nauman Foundation then, I hope on our part as well, thinking that we could join these things together. In other words, what would we be able to bring to these newly democratic societies? In fact, we could look and say, you know, many people are going to work to help them develop the democratic institutions they need. And no shortage of economists to advise them on how to move from those command economies under communism to an open market. But we also knew that there were so many issues of intolerance, of prejudice, a tension between and among the various minority groups, different religious groups in these societies. They had always been there. They may have been in some ways frozen during that communist period, but they hadn't disappeared. And we thought we could contribute to this. We, after all, AJC, virtually a hundred years of working to combat prejudice and intolerance in the United States. And we thought we had things we could share. But how to do it and with whom, well, that was another issue. And so we thought at the time, perhaps this could be our German-Jewish contribution to a challenge that uh, most of the world now came to recognize. There had been already various programs in bringing young American Jews here to Germany and bringing Germans to the United States to see how the Jewish community worked. We thought, meaning AJC and our Nauman Foundation partners, instead of one more German-Jewish dialogue, let's pool our resources and make a contribution to now the needs that were being observed in Central and Eastern Europe. And that's how our program began. It certainly has evolved over these 25 years, but I don't think the goals themselves are any different. In fact, when we began the program, up until today, we always had some discomfort with its name. We speak of promoting tolerance, but that really becomes an excuse for us to say, you know, we want more than tolerance. We want really understanding and appreciation for diversity, uh, a realization that pluralism in society is something to be valued. So not just the matter of tolerating others, but really fully accepting them. That was the goal, that is the goal of this program. How do you do it? That's the challenge. And in fact, when we invited the first group to the United States, and now today we'll be inviting, I think, that 25th group to come to the United States, we have a similar message. I will say to them, you know, it is not that in America we have all the solutions for you, and by the way, today I'm sure a few people would look to us and think we do. But we would say, I have said over all these years, in America we've really had all the problems. After all, the United States is a society composed of very diverse groups, religious and ethnic, 
immigrants from all parts of the world, they don't automatically, they don't easily get along with each other. They don't normally, naturally respect and value each other. You have to teach it. You have to develop this. And so what we thought was, you come to America. We'll show you what goes on in the United States, what different civil society groups are doing, what we, AJC, and other American Jews are doing, and what goes on on the part of government as well. You look at all these things, and then you decide, would this work for you and your country? And hopefully you'll find something to bring back. What we were saying to people 25 years ago, we say again today, come, observe, see what we're doing, see how we're struggling, see how we hope in some areas we're succeeding, and hopefully there'll be tools for you to take home. This is a very challenging question. How do you measure the success of a program like this? If we somehow want to say by virtue of this program, these societies have now significantly uh, succeeded in combating intolerance, in fighting racism and discrimination, well, I think we have a hard time looking at that and saying we've truly succeeded. We've contributed to it. In a way, it's a very retail program. What we're really investing here is investing in people. Our hope is the people that are identified to participate will have the ability to observe, to learn, and to bring something back and thereby make some contribution, hopefully some positive change in their own societies. You don't know that automatically. We can't tell after a seminar in Europe, a 10-day trip in the United States that, aha, we've succeeded. And I'm not sure these people themselves realize it until maybe months, even at sometimes years after. But you know we have 25 years now to look back. And I think we see, we'll see today even, with some of our alumni of this program. Uh, what they themselves will tell us it meant to them, what they learned from it, how they managed to use it in their own ways. That, I think, is the best measure of success. And again, now that we've had 25 years of this program, we do have a solid core of people who know what it's about and hopefully continue their work in fighting and struggling to make a more equitable society in their own homes. I think we'd like to believe that change can be large, immediate, transformative, and accomplished in a very brief period of time. In fact, the way the program came to be, it was at a time that I think few people could have predicted even a few years earlier, that the wall would come down, that communism would implode, and that the dreams, the hopes that people had had for decades suddenly were realized, an open, free society, there for their own making. But you know, to really change attitudes, to change the climate of how people look at others, it's a hard job. It takes time. We tried in various ways to, let's say, jumpstart this effort. And in some ways we succeeded. But to really put down those roots that are going to take hold, it's a lot longer than maybe we had imagined, a lot more difficult than we imagined. So I think that's one of the lessons also that we uh, take from this program. Uh, again, I'd love to say we've succeeded. So now let's uh, declare success, close the books, move on to something else. And in fact, you have a very ironic, I would say, uh, uh, comparison to look at today. When we see the people who are coming, the people that the Nauman Foundation will gather first uh, here these days in Europe that will then come to the United States, they're remarkably more mature, educated, knowledgeable, and uh, uh, skilled 
in all of these areas than the first participants were. They've learned a great deal and they've already accomplished a great deal in their own countries. So that's a great, I think, positive benefit that we see in the program we're doing. But you know, some of those same problems that we were, we were witnessing in these countries 25 years ago, we're witnessing or we're witnessing again. You know, in the early 90s, particularly in Central and Eastern Europe, we saw, and I say this a special interest from a Jewish perspective, the difficulty societies had to look back to their own Holocaust era past, to acknowledge the role that their own citizens played in the persecution of their Jewish neighbors at the time. This has been a difficult process. In the early 90s, we thought we had succeeded in significant measure in getting countries to look critically at that past, to really uh, stop a process of rehabilitating fascist era leaders, using them as somehow vehicles to support their new nationalism. We saw historical commissions being created, legitimate critical museums of history, including museums of the Holocaust, being established in these countries. In many ways, we thought we've succeeded. We've almost solved the problem. But look today, in some of these same countries, those fascist leaders of uh, over now half a century ago from the 1940s are returning. We see maybe not an outright denial of the Holocaust, but we see a distortion of its history in some of these countries. So our work is still there. And I have to say, we have our own challenges in the United States. I would not have imagined that today we would be confronting what we are in America. So our work is one that requires effort on both sides of the Atlantic. I think we really need to look for and elevate the kind of initiatives more and more now we have to talk about initiatives that different parts of civil society are engaged in, different organizations. In the past we may have highlighted in the American piece of this program the important roles that government can play in uh, combating racism, xenophobia and intolerance literally in addressing with legal tools and uh, public uh, policy uh, these problems. I think in some ways now we have to look more at what goes on on the part of different private organizations, ethnic, religious, civil rights groups. They themselves have become mobilized and I think that's an important thing to be able to see. So even if uh, the, the picture we have in America today uh, is a troubling one to many of us. It does provide an opportunity for really newly energized activity that I think will in the end uh, help uh, thwart those uh, elements of uh, seemingly renewed bigotry and intolerance and put us back on course again. Well, promoting tolerance is relevant today because, frankly, tolerance today is in short supply. The program began uh, in partnership with the Nauman Foundation, but it was something that, uh, in a very personal way, uh, we, in this case, Jorgen Vickert, who represented the Nauman Foundation in Washington and, and I discussed and thought about. And to us, it was an entirely new, new venture. We really didn't know if it would succeed. The Nauman Foundation itself wasn't sure how to explain to its offices how to identify prospective candidates for this program. In fact, when we had our first gathering in Europe, it wasn't really a, a seminar on uh, a particular subject matter underneath the larger 
uh, framework of promoting tolerance. It was in many ways an opportunity to see if the very people that were identified were the right people. If they even had basic language skills to be able to understand what they would see in America. But one of those first gatherings we met in Prague. And so there was something very special. I think Prague as a city, today it's known, it draws enormous numbers of tourists. At the time, the wall had come down, communism had ended. It was a beautiful city, but I sometimes think of it as, now it's a city in full color. Then it was still a city in black and white. But it was a city that had an incredible heritage in regard to its Jewish history. And it was still present. And so I do recall in one of those first meetings, just walking the streets of the old Jewish town, again with Jorgen Vickert, and thinking too, strange how things have developed, but here we are, German, Jewish, in this city, decades after the end of the war, only a brief time after the fall of communism, thinking what kind of a new world really is out there for us. You know, in, uh, in Hebrew, when we reach a milestone, we sometimes say, chazak, chazak, v'nit chazek. May you go from strength to strength. So my hope, my wish would be, okay, we've reached this milestone of 25 years. We know there's still a lot of work ahead of us. Let's hope, let's believe we still have that strength and in this collaboration, to continue for many years into the future.